Welcome to the Force Velocity Profiling Dashboard. This dashboard allows you to explore the force velocity profiling results for a single athlete. When you first load the dashboard, you can choose which athlete you're deciding to focus on and the date range in which you want to pull data from. By default, the athlete's most recent result will show up, but you can change this to look at specific results as well as the athlete's highest Pmax, V0 and F0. You can also choose to change the target in which you're comparing this athlete to. Later in this video, I'll show you how to set up those targets. For this particular session, you'll be able to see the athlete's maximum power, as well as the comparison for that value to the target value. You'll also be able to see the athlete's maximum velocity, maximum force, and the slope of the force velocity line. On the next graph, you'll be able to see the important force velocity curve. This one shows the athlete's force that they generated throughout the sprint and plots it against their velocity during the sprint. You can see the athlete's results here in blue and their target in the dashed orange line. For areas of the curve where the athletes performed better than their target, those areas will be highlighted green. When the athlete performs worse than their target, those areas will be highlighted red. You can see in this particular example that this athlete performed above their target in the force dominant portion of the graph, which is the left hand side was below their target in the velocity dominated portion of the graph, which is the right hand side. They're about equal with their target in the middle of the graph, which is typically associated with power. We can see that represented numerically over here in the table, where we have higher positive values in the strength and strength power sections of the graph. We have roughly equal value for the power, which is the middle section of the graph, and then larger negative values for the power velocity and velocity sections of the table. This means that the athlete should focus on improving their top hand velocity in order to improve their overall sprinting performance. This would have the effect of shifting this x-intercept out to the right, causing this area of the curve to become closer or even ahead of their target. Below that we can also see values for their power velocity curve and the ratio of force to velocity curve. Underneath this we can see the athlete's history for those key summary variables of maximum power, maximum velocity, maximum force and the slope of the force velocity curve. This allows you to see how the athlete is tracking over time for those key variables. You can see the athlete's most recent result their best result and the average for how many results they've recorded and what their target value is, as well as the graphical representation of those key variables. In the comparison tab, we can compare the athlete's results for those key variables against a group. We can choose a specific group to compare to, or even choose specific athletes. The bullet chart below show the athlete's result in comparison to the group average and where they sit on the interquartile ranges. You can also see how they compare to the group minimum average and maximum average over here. To create a force velocity profile, you must click through the dashboard, come over to the sidebar and click on dashboard templates, then FVP profile. Any profiles you've previously created will show up in the sidebar or you can create a new profile from scratch. First of all, we have to give that profile a name. Try to keep this name unique so that you can easily identify it later on. Select the units that you use within your SmartSpeed system and then choose the method of which you want to create your profile. The two available methods are either enter in split times where you might know a set of normative data or if you know the specific force velocity profile values that you want this athlete to aim for, you can enter them directly. When you choose enter split times, you can either custom enter those split times into a table along with the distances, mass and height if known for a particular target you're entering. Or you can choose one of the preset examples that we built into the system. As an example, we've got a preset from Usain Bolt's run in the 2008 Olympics. When you select a preset, this will automatically fill in the distance and the cumulative time values. Going back into the enter FVP targets, if you choose this, then you can simply enter the results of the F0, V0, or Pmax. In order for this calculation to work, you'll need at least two of these values. Once you've done that, click on save and close. 
Once you save this data, it gets sent to our FVP algorithm in order to calculate the ideal slope and values for the force velocity curves. This can sometimes take up to a minute to run. Once this is done, you'll notice that the model run column will be set to yes. When you go into that profile, you'll notice that this result section is now filled in with data. This means that your model has run successfully. If this doesn't occur after one to two minutes, please contact Fusion Sport for assistance. Lastly, you can assign a default FVP profile to any athlete within your team's list by editing the team's form. You'll notice a new column called FVP Profile. This is the default profile that will be applied to that athlete whenever you load the FVP dashboard. You can still apply other profiles to that athlete using the drop down in the dashboard, but this is the profile that will be set by default. To enter a profile, simply type in the name of the profile that you want to apply to that specific athlete. If you need reminders of what those names are, you can access them in the sidebar under Dashboard Templates, FVP Profile, and they'll be listed here. Once you're ready, scroll to the bottom and hit Save and Close.